Hey, welcome back to part two of our study called A Man Above Reproach. We're looking into Titus today. And uh, let's begin talking about what an overseer is. So what does this word mean? The word in Greek is episkopos, which means overseer. Pretty simple. That's why it's translated that in English. Now, in some translations of the Bible, it's rendered as bishop, which is a word that most people are familiar with. If you know anything about, you know, Roman Catholicism or Episcopalian churches, you would hear this term. Um, so many, some other denominations use the word bishop as well. But that's the word here that is um, in Greek, episkopa, episkopos. So in our text here with Titus, we see that elder and overseer are being used interchangeably. It's not the only place that we see this happening. If we look at the descriptions of what an elder does and what an overseer does, they're the same thing. For example, 1 Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Here you would expect the word overseer to be used by Paul, but instead he uses the word elder. Now, if you turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses uh, 1 through 2, it says, So I exhort the elders among you as fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight. So in this passage, Peter uses the word elder. He says that the elder is to shepherd or pastor is the word in the original language. And he also tells them to have oversight, to oversee people. So the Apostle Paul uses all three words, pastor, elder, and overseer, in connection with the same office, to the same group of people. The Apostle Paul likewise connects uh, pastor, overseer, and elder. If you look at Acts chapter 20, we find an example. In verse 17, he Sent to, uh, sent to Ephesus and called all the elders from that church there to come to him. In verse 28, Paul tells the elders that the Holy Spirit had made them overseers. And then he tells them to care for the church, which is literally the word pastor in Greek. So we have here Paul telling elders that they are overseers and that they're to pastor. So these three terms all refer to the one role, one group of people, one office in the church. They're just three words that describe one job, and they kind of come at it from different angles. So, now this gets confusing because depending on the denomination or church that you belong to, they don't always use the words in the same way as Peter and Paul do. You know, some have created three different offices for, for these words, which seems to contradict what Peter and Paul say. But regardless of what it is practiced today, the apostles use the word interchangeably. So the pastor, elder, overseer. Because if you think about it, it's really three words that describe the one office. Pastor means a shepherd, to protect, to care for. An elder is someone who is mature, someone who is um, long in the faith, who is, you know, has that sense of older to it. And then Overseer has the idea of watching over, caring for, administrating over. So it's really describing the one in the same office. Now, another thing that Paul says is that elders are stewards. Remember that a steward is a person who uses the possessions of another to provide for others. According to Webster, a steward is a minister of Christ whose duty is to dispense the provisions of the gospel, to preach its doctrines, and to administer its ordinances. So an elder is a person who dispenses the provisions of the gospel. It's not his message. It's not his provision. He hands out the gospel. Paul spoke of this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, where he says, This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. So, you can throw steward into the mix of shepherd, elder, and overseer. So all four of these words refer to the same role in the church. The word steward helps to put this role in its proper place. There's a temptation for elders to think you know, highly of themselves, or probably more highly than they should. 
because of the work that they're doing. We have all heard of the abuse that has been done by elders or pastors who have thought too highly of themselves. So for an elder to think of themselves as a steward, owning nothing in themselves, but only using what has been given to them, that's a good start. That's a good place to be. Now again, Paul brings up the idea about being above reproach here in our text. I won't go into too much of this because we looked at that last week, but it's worth noting that Paul uses it again right after he used it in the last sentence. The first time he used it was about the elder and his family, and now it uses it now using it considering the elder's own behavior. An elder must be above reproach concerning how he runs his family and how he runs his own life. He must not disgrace himself or the name of Christ by his behavior. He should not be scorned because he's living in sin. Now, he will be scorned by the world when he's living a godly life, and that's to be expected and to be rejoiced over, frankly. The overseers are set up as they're, they're set up as examples to the church, and therefore immediately following the qualifications of being, rep of a, being above reproach, we have examples of what he must not be and examples of what he must be. So Paul dives right into some examples. Okay, the elder is supposed to be above reproach, overseer is supposed to be ab above reproach. Here are the examples to look at to see if they are above reproach. <clears throat> so this is very detailed, very very deliberate here that what Paul is doing. He's not leaving it to speculation or to own personal choices. He's saying here, here's the qualification above reproach. Here's what above reproach entails. And you got blah, 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 the rest of it. So, so next time we're going to start looking at some of these, um, these details here, some of these examples of how to see if someone is above reproach. So come back next time and we'll take a look at that.